I wanted to jump on live very quickly to um, talk about the things that I talk about the most. One of them is trauma, one of them is the nervous system, and one of them is healing from trauma and nervous system related issues. So number one, first thing that's very important to understand is that trauma is not in the event, it is in the nervous system. And I'm not going to get into all the different nervous system branches, what the parasympathetic, what the um, sympathetic is, the differences between the high tone and low tone, dorsal of the vagus nerve, which is the work of Stephen Porges. There's so much stuff. So if you're interested in learning about this, be sure to head over to my site, go to my YouTube channel, my blog posts, join, join me for one of my programs. But to go back, trauma is not in the event, it is in the nervous system, specifically the autonomic nervous system. Second piece, there's this thought of um, why, you know, if, if a trauma is something that just occurs once, why does it take a lifetime to heal it? And here's the thing, there's an accuracy in that. In the Western world, let's say, let's talk about North America, Europe, Australia, places where we're really living in a very stressed, um, capitalized, if you want to call it, society, right? Social structures are set up such that parents can't be with their babies when they're born, they have to go back to work, there's not enough health care, education we have to pay for, the food supply isn't clean, you know, we can go on and on and on. In these more westernized countries, many people don't start off with a healthy nervous system. And it starts even in utero and it starts in past generations. So if you have someone who's born into high stress, whose mother was stressed, parents were stressed, maybe there was abuse, maybe there was a lot of expectation growing up, that sets the tone for a nervous system to be dysregulated, in other words, unhealthy. And we know now via some very conclusive research, something called the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, that when there is stress, when there's toxicity, when there's abuse, when there's adversity, early on in life, and by that I mean from like day one throughout childhood and teenagehood, but you really in those first three years, that the nervous system is not wired with resiliency. It's not strong. And so it's more susceptible to other traumas. It's more susceptible to societal stress, to environmental stress. And so this is why right now in our society, there's a lot of folks who are confused because they just can't seem to crack their trauma. They can't seem to crack their, their health issues. They're doing all the right things. They're eating well and exercising and being mindful and getting therapy. And yet there's this niggly little piece that's just not working and it it's this old wiring it's the map if you will it's the storyboard of the nervous system it was never set properly in the first place therefore this means that going into the future when there is some kind of shock trauma or stressful situation the system isn't going to absorb that stress and integrate it well. It's gonna get confused, it's gonna trap it, it's gonna micromanage, etc., etc. We know that trauma, as I said, I'm gonna say it again, is not in the event necessarily. Trauma is in the nervous system, it's in the dysregulation of the nervous system. And how a person becomes dysregulated in their nervous system is dependent or how a person, I should say, stays dysregulated is dependent on how that system was early, was wired early on. So there's another story that isn't often being told when people talk about like why can't someone get over something when the trauma just occurred in one event or one accident or one abusive relationship. Chances are a lot of these accidents that we get into, a lot of the abusive relationships, the shitty situations we're in, it's due to a faulty sense of safety. It's another term from Stephen Porges, who is the founder of the polyvagal theory, 
something called neuroception. Neuroception is our perception of safety or our perception of danger. And when we were brought up in a high stress environment, we have to work as human beings to, sit, to stay safe. And how we do that is through dysregulation of our nervous system. We cannot be ourselves, we cannot be free, we can't be authentic, we can't be vulnerable when our immediate environment, whether it's um, our school system, our parental system, whatever it might be, when it is not safe and we can't express who we truly are. And this is why people spend a lifetime trying to figure out who they truly are, trying to find relationships that aren't toxic, jobs that are meaningful, health that is vibrant and vital, all these pieces. So we have to kind of step back and look at the fact that it's more than just the event. Usually in our culture, Western society, it's more than just one accident. It is a series of events that usually starts way before we were even born and how our parents were treated, how their trauma responses were either met or not met. For most of us watching this, chances are they weren't met. We're really learning right now in this time point on earth what the nervous system is, how it responds, what our survival physiology is. It's deeper than emotions, right? It's deeper than emotions. It's deeper than mindset. It's in this unconscious survival response that all humans have. We all have the survival responses that reptiles and amphibians and right mammal or non-mammal creatures that live through survival. We as humans have part of that nervous system too. The good news is we have a higher level nervous system that is mammalian. The trouble is that primitive nervous system will always win if it is driving the front of the bus. So we have to A, learn about it, B, we have to work with it, and C, we have to realize that this healing of the nervous system, this healing of trauma, is more than meets the eye. It's way more than meets the eye. So I just wanted to pop in real quick to mention this because as we get more knowledge and more people get excited about this, um, there's a lot of misinformation. There's parts of the story that aren't being told, and I hope to as we go into this year and into the next, start bringing these stories to you via these um, mediums like here. Um, I'm on Instagram right now. I've got a YouTube channel with so many videos. They've been deemed binge worthy, so be sure to check out that. And my blog, my website, and of course my programs. So remember, review, trauma is not in the, not in the event, is in the nervous system. Nervous system dysregulation is the culprit of pretty much most of our issues, right? Most of our issues, Western issues, chronic illness, mental illness, relational illness, if you wanna call it that. And it's not as simple as just one event that causes our system to be thrown off. It is typically the wiring and the building of our nervous system way back when, right? Way back when, when we were in utero, when we were little, that will set the tone for our resiliency later in life. The good news, the good news, because there's good news, there's something called neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity goes both ways. It can create addiction and harm, or it can create healing and goodness. So that's what we're about here, learning about the nervous system, learning about what trauma really is, and then using the power of neuroplasticity to really heal at that deep, deep nervous system and cellular level. All right, I gotta sign off, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being here. And we will talk to you again very soon. Bye.